sweet science of boxing, the key narrative for those of you who have never taken part in a sport is to hit and not get hit. And it's up to the coach to teach these aspects to the fighter over a course of a training camp. Now, we will get into the Chris Ariola Andy Ruiz fight that happened May 1st, 2021. And followed by that, we will take a peep into one of the undercard fights to speak specifically to the responsibility of the fighter and the responsibility that's been way overshadowed by great coaches. Now, as we get into this, I'd like to introduce myself for those of you who've never watched this channel. Boy, you are late to the dance. My name is Eric A. Bradley, and this is The Fight Chat. From the series The Fight Show, When you're looking at a fight, people, the first thing you gotta realize is you gotta know what to look at and you have to know what to look for. The first thing you need to see is the hole. And the first thing you need to understand is how to react to a counter. When I watched the fight last night, it was obvious to me that Chris Ariola came with a game plan, hence his coach. Joe Goosen, who had him circling, hands up high in the peekaboo-like style, working behind the jab. Andy Ruiz in a new training camp had the ability to come out like a storm, hard punching, fast hands, in much better shape. What I did note is that Andy Ruiz was able to make the adjustment midway through the fight, not walking in the punches, not getting countered. And you can use this analogy for anything or this breakdown segment for any scenario, any style matchup in boxing. A walk forward guy versus a guy who's boxing, circling, using the ring, ring generalship. Now, Let's get back to the third, fourth, fifth round because the first round was controlled. The first three rounds were in a fill out process, but Andy Ruiz had his mind made up. He was coming out there to impose and show what he had, which is okay because under new trainer ship, his ability to use his cachet is, is, is okay. Joe Goosen, a boxing mind, very, very well educated and a smart and high ring IQ when it comes to working that corner. When you see Chris Ariola using the ring, working behind the jab, uh, countering what Andy Ruiz was going to bring. Now, I don't think that Chris Ariola had game plan two, which was basically counter if Andy Ruiz who's now under new mentorship would make an adjustment to that. For someone like myself, who's been in, in world championship training camps and know what's required and know what you have to look for after game plan A, if it does not work, you have to have game plan B. And sometimes that gets adjusted too. So you have to have the C. <laughs> And what I missed was when it got to the fifth, sixth round after having early success, Chris Ariola. Remember when I say boxing is about the sweet science of hitting and not getting hit after the first four or five rounds. Andy Ruiz started to retreat. And he started to set traps and began countering when he realized, oh, I'm getting countered. He made the adjustment. That's usually what people have to use the phrase. I'm going back to the drawing board because they didn't have 
a game plan C, D, or E in the corner, which is up to the coach. Now, when I break this part down right here, it's going to really give you a better insight into how do you understand, how do you know how to go about doing this? <sighs> one thing that was apparent, apparent from round one to round 12 is Andy Ruiz had 12 inches of real estate from the elbow to the top of the hip available for Chris Ariola to strike and not one moment did he take advantage of that and what or whose responsibility is it to notice this well first is the fighter who claims he can fight second it's the trainer who's his second set of eyes and what I saw is the same thing I saw when you date back this fight back in probably 2004, 2005, in that era, if not that exact date. Lehman Brewster versus Lyakovich. Sergei Lyakovich started off with a jab and a right hook to the body. And that right hook to the body never got answered, so he pummeled Lehman Brewster and since then, I have not seen a heavyweight use the right hook to the body. I feel Chris Ariola came up short because he head hunted. He did not have a second game plan. After dropping Ruiz, it was really clear that he came to win. If Andy Ruiz didn't make an adjustment, Eddie Reynoso has done an amazing job with Andy Ruiz in such a very short period of time because it's not like Andy Ruiz wasn't already a good fighter. He became world champion. He just didn't have the discipline and the wherewithal to stay champion because when it comes to being a champion, you can get to the championship date and come away victorious, but reigning as champion is an entirely different suit. You can't pretend to be world champion reigning. Your skill set, your offensive and defensive prowess can get you that title with a lot of hard work and discipline, discipline and covering hurdles. But one thing is for sure, you cannot reign as champion without adding because now you're the hunted. People are coming after you. They're training specifically for you, not overlooking you. And then you get the belt, but they're taking the opportunity to break you down. Every time you win a fight, that guy is coming. That Mr. T he's studying every move you make. Chris Ariola was his own nightmare. Hence his nickname. He didn't do the work. Joe Goosen is a great coach. I've watched him over the decades with Diego Corrales overcome Castillo, uh, Castillo. And Castillo was a vicious animal. And Joe Goosen coached Diego Corrales up. When Chris Ariola met Ruiz in the ring, there was not that moment where I felt he coached him up enough and he said, use the jab. He was working behind the jab. But the thing about it is whenever you throw the jab and you want to throw that right hand, the jab is used as a distraction. Pop the head back, short jab. It can be a six inch jab, four inch jab, pop, snap it, you know, or you can, you can pummel them with a shotgun. All right. And the first thing you do after you throw that jab, your head is off the line and you strike. And that's what it looks like. If you go back to that uh, Sergei Lakovich, Lehman Brewster fight, it was, I knew from the second round, I said, that's his game plan all night and he's going to stick with it because he figured something out. Lehman Brewster was a heavy hitter, hard hitter, great endurance, could take a punch, beat Klitschko once, Vladimir that is, and uh, 
Trust me, whenever you have that ability, it's very important that you understand what do I do next? And if Chris Ariola takes that shot and utilizes the jab to throw the right hook to the body or even dip off to the left and throw that liver shot, it's an entirely different fight. Maybe he even stops Chris, I mean, uh, Andy Ruiz in that fight. Because one thing's for sure, you cannot take hooks to the body from a heavyweight when he's punching like someone like Chris Ariola, who was able to drop Andy Ruiz with a headshot, not even the same hook that Anthony Joshua knocked him in. He hit him with a knocked him down with a right hand. And you're talking about a man who's only been down once. Hence his fight with Anthony Joshua once in his career. He knocked him down with the other hand. So that lets you know that Chris Ariola has some pop in them rocks. That's kind of what it is. I had to look at this fight for what it was. It was missing one component. And that totally would have cemented Joe Goosen's legendary status and catapulted it to another level. But it didn't take away because he was working and playing with house money anyway. Uh, Chris Ariola was an underdog, a great underdog. We all knew it was going to be a great fight. We didn't know exactly what triumphs would happen and, and what adjustments would be made and how um, Eddie Reynoso, his training and tactical approach to boxing would impact Andy Ruiz. But we, we were able to find out using and being around Canelo definitely because I saw many little wrinkles that Canelo has. And for that reason, I lend a hand to your coaches who are out there by saying you have to pay attention to the details. The devil's in the details. It was obvious even before that fight that Andrew Ruiz is very exposed. His body is very exposed. I'm getting to it. Without any further ado, I'm going to attack that body because it's time to box whenever you hear that bell ring from round one. That's kind of what my breakdown was. My overall insight for you, who, what did you see in that fight? Which leads me to a word from our sponsor, which is Master Boxing. Have the ability to elevate your game. And this short clip will give you the idea and understanding why and how can this happen? Where do you go and get the knowledge to be ready so you don't have to get ready in the sport of boxing? Take a look. The thing that I've learned from the school of boxing and really the main reason why I went there in the first place was to learn about the sport aspect of boxing, the ring craft, what goes into developing solid professionals and amateurs inside of the ring, the sport. And the breakdown in which the way they do it at the School of Boxing is, is, is wonderful. Uh, it's, it's given me everything that I've been looking for to really take my team to that next level, uh, starting from ground one, from all the way from beginners to experienced boxers. You can take them through the process, trust the process, and you will find that you're gonna go a long way because of the pedigree and the lineage and the tools that they provide you within the School of Boxing. That kind of says it all. There's a place where coaches have to be groomed. As I was coming up and being under the tutelage of elitists, I learned that it's advantageous that you take the leap of faith into a place that was not made for coaches, meaning the educational realm. So I hope that gave you insight. And if you're looking to become one of the world renowned coaches, you got to make sure you get educated. So there are many, many opportunities and, and ways to learn. So that was my insight for that fight. That was my takeaway. It's always much easier to say that from the outside. But when you understand there's a playbook like the School of Boxing offers their people, it's very important that you search, sort out and find that place of respite. If you're in the world of training, 
athletes, believe you me, it makes a humongous difference. Now, I promised you guys something that had to do with the undercard last night. And that was the Ramos versus Figueroa fight, which ended very violently with body shots. But that isn't my point. My conversation is about the coaches who know that they're dealing with fighters that have particular qualities and also have things that they need to work on. Hence is why I have to tip my cap to Coach Diaz, who was actually supposed to be on the show the Friday before the fight, or well, the Thursday before the fight. Our, our schedules uh, collided. He was in a press conference. Of course, they got to do the Thursday press conference, which I totally was not even conscious that that fight was going on at the time. But since then, I've had an opportunity to um, chat back and forth with him. And, you know, he's a good, he's in a good space. But we have to pay attention to the guys who are saving young men, giving them the opportunity to reach their goals. He did it for Timothy Bradley. He's done it for a multitude of other guys. He's gotten them to a place that they would have possibly never have gotten without the kind of tutelage that he's bringing. So I have to tip my cap to the coaches who are out there doing it. And the fighters, it's their responsibility to also be prepared, live the kind of life. And if you're out there and you're in that position and you're a coach and you got fighters that are not following protocol, that would allow them to get to the next levels, then make sure that you have those conversations. And because it's easy to just be pulled in a direction when it comes to being in that spotlight, but that spotlight comes with a lot of responsibility. So once again, to the coaches who are building the fighters right now, the coaches in the school of boxing, Remember, double down on who you are. Take note from someone who was groomed by coaches who did not play. So my cap goes off to Coach Bradley and my cap also goes out, goes off to Coach Kenny Adams, who was a lion and did not play. No fighter comes in there and takes full first role. You follow suit about face. And until next time, forward march, we're out of here. Continue blessings. Continue to follow us at Master Boxing across the board to see the fight show. One of our most immaculate programs is It's Time to Box, learning the fundamentals and the skill set of boxing and the coaches that are out there teaching it on a very high level right now. So until next time, be blessed at God's speed. Eric A. Bradley, I'm signing out. Continue to watch. It's your time now. You're going to go a long Peace. Way because of the pedigree and the lineage and the tools that they provide you within the school of boxing.